All right, so how'd you come to playing in bands? What introduced you to and one made you want to play in bands? I'm skateboarding. Like, uh, I'm skating. I started hearing about other bands when I was you know, real small. And then uh, I tried to find the bands that live in Venice, Florida in the early 80s, and in that matter, mid 70s at that point in time. Uh, <laughs> Extremely limited access to any kind of alternative music of any sort. So it took a little while, and once, once, uh, once we started hearing that, it was like immediate. Well, obviously, it was doing like old seventy punk, but once, once we heard that, then there was no turning back. And then within a few years, we were starting our own band. Hell yeah! Um, what is the coolest thing about being in a band? Uh, I guess the creative aspect of it is it's, uh, fulfilling or whatever you want to call it to be able to like, make something out of nothing. Yeah, hell yeah. Trying to some form of energy. And then, uh, in our case, uh, you know, a lot of it's politically motivated as far as the, the intellectual aspect of the lyrics. So it's to try to create some positive change and try to make the world a better place. Kind of cliche, but oh, yeah. you know what it is. Uh, what is the worst thing about being in a band? There's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, if you're really into it, you're just going to be broke all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that sucks. But, but you know, the best part of maybe it's like when most bands get huge or is even reasonably successful, almost always their music starts sucking, like, immediately. You know, those bands, of course, there's exceptions, but 99% of the time. Oh, yeah. So, maybe being broke is why a lot of punk bands seem to have some form of musical longevity. You know, they, they might put out, instead of putting out two good records, they might put out six good records. Right, right. Which is, I try to shoot for that aspect. I mean, yeah, it'd be great to be able to get better medical care and stuff like that. Stuff that is kind of a, but that's kind of, I think that's the basic right, health care, things like that, where it's part of why I'm in what I'm doing anyway, to try to create social change. But other than that, I'm not worried about having a lot of money. It's, it's not going to do anything for you. It's not going to make you a better person. It's not going to, you're not really even going to maybe even make more change, because usually to get all that money, you had to, negative things anyway. So, yep. Oh yeah. You know, if you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> so it's not really positive change. You know, you're Mr. Microsoft and you're giving away millions of dollars, but you're probably a child laborer somewhere in the manufacturing chain. So it, it seems to me redundant and stupid. Oh yeah. You're not, you're not really changing. What is the most memorable show you've ever played? Boy, there's a lot of them. Getting donked on the head at, at, at uh, Dead Milkman, before Dead Milkman, that's fairly memorable. <laughs> Got my skull cracked by some of the, not, not people uh, at the show, just people out in the neighborhood. Right. Uh, I currently I passed out roughly three quarters away to the show or something, so I had to go to the hospital. Uh, Damn. Jumping off the top of the Cuban Club Dome. I don't remember what show that was. There was one. Uh, I like the last one at the state where you were climbing up on the rafters. That climbing was pretty up good. the rafters. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. You know, it had some elevation. Well, well, higher than the look until I got up there. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. All kinds of shows. Um, what are your goals when you're in a band, as a band? I guess mostly to try to communicate with people. Try to, uh, and by that, you know, that's multifaceted. Not just like, hey, listen to what I'm saying, you know, be a robot and do what I say. Just more like, hey, you, you may not be alone in how you're feeling about things. Right. right. Uh, society's a pretty rotten place, so maybe don't kill yourself or whatever, or you don't go out and kill somebody else. Just be, uh, there may be some people that need to be killed. No, oh, yeah, that's yeah. another story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not talking like peace and love shit. I'm talking like, hey, you know, don't don't feel like you're the only person in the world that seems feels like it's hopeless. 
or, right. or that you don't want to work some shitty job, like or be committed to some shitty job, you know. Maybe work a shitty job and try not to work a shitty job in the sense of it's like a fucking multinational death corporation. Oh yeah. And, and, and then do something else to do, you know, your free time. You know, you're kind of, once again, you're kind of riding the line, but if you're going to operate in society, the system's built for you to almost, there's almost no way you can survive without being on the edge of being a decent person, which is part of what we're trying to do. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, do you make money or lose money playing in a band? <laughs> Definitely lose. Um, outside of being in a band, how do you make a living? I do audio video work. So I do, uh, sometimes I build like big rock concerts, which, you know, once again, there I am like kind of some way involved in some of the shows. I, I don't have any, you know, I'm not like the world's largest ACDC fan since uh, Bon Scott died. Right, yeah. But, you know, I, like I said, I build a show for them. That's not so bad. That's a real band. They fucking play instruments. They really actually sing. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a fucking band. So yeah. I got no problem with that. But then I'll build like a Britney Spears or whatever the fucking pop star is in the day. Right. And, and that, if I'm there, I do have a little problem with. So that kind of stuff creates on me a little. And I'm like, oh, here I am, like, in a way, kind of supporting the illusion of this person's talent. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got you. Hell yeah. Um, what is the biggest crowd you've ever played for? Uh, I don't know. Nothing crazy big. Maybe a thousand, two thousand, easy, something like that. Uh, what's the smallest crowd you ever played for? Pretty much yourselves. <laughs> no, more when we started. Bands and band members, girlfriends? Yeah, yeah. Then we go, you know, everybody ends up playing a few though, especially during the weekdays or something. Hell yeah. Um,. Well, you just went on tour. Where'd you go? Uh, this little thing was just real small. We just did, um, this is like second half. We just did uh, Melbourne, Florida, Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, and then here. But before that, we did um, LA, Medford, Oregon, uh, Seattle, Portland, uh, Mexicali, Mexico. Nice. Um, San Diego. Another show in LA. One was in San Pedro, so we did two shows in the LA area. Um, we did a couple other shows up and down. So we basically went from LA up all the way back down. Uh, do you have a van or do you rent a van? Uh, we rented a van out there. We have a van here. Uh, do you take your own equipment or do you backline? Uh, we take our own stuff, as much as possible. Um, if you had to give a new band advice on what you've learned being in bands, what would you say to them? To what? I'm sorry. If you, had, if you had to give a new band advice on what you've learned being in oh. bands, what would you say to them? Don't give up, you know, like, just because people aren't interested in what you're doing right then doesn't mean either, either they won't change or, or, or maybe you'll change as you progress and keep playing, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, how many releases do you have out? Uh, technically... Maybe 15 to 20, but the majority of it is more like a dozen. Oh yeah. Um, is your family supportive of your musical career? Are you mm, my parents were in some ways like they let us at, at one point practice in their uh, garage, so right. that was cool. Oh yeah. And then later uh, we practiced in my dad's work warehouse, so that was good. But then as we got more, you know, right. involved, we got our own. Oh yeah. Um, how is your local music scene? Do you bands support each other, or do you feel that there's a competitive nature? I think there's a little bit of competitive nature, but I mean, I think that's actually kind of good because it, it spurs you to maybe try some things you wouldn't do, or, or you know, a little competitiveness is fine. Not, you know, I'm not in the backstabbing, obviously, right. or yeah, yeah, yeah. weird, but you know, a little competition is good because it. it it might not be progress otherwise. Yeah, yeah, how it makes the band get better. Right. Um, how do you think you can help improve the local music scene? Or what do you think can be done to help improve the local music scene? As myself or, or people? Just in general. I mean, number one thing is, you know, 
I know it's hard because we all are fucking working more than we used to because money's worthless. We're adults and we have to Yeah, work. and money's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking, everybody's broke. Yeah. So, but when you can, just go to shows. That's like the best thing you can do because then bands will keep playing and, and they'll put out new records and it's, you just be involved. And I don't mean like you don't have to be Mr. Scene or Mrs. Scene stress, but just be involved in your scene a little bit to some degree. So that people, because part of the half the fun of playing is the social aspect of going to the show and seeing people and getting to talk to people and getting ideas and learning about what's going on in their life. And, you know, it's, it's it's part of you know, like leaving your own fabric of society. Hell yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. You don't have kids, right? <laughs> Is this, for, is this a legal document? <laughs> it's pretty much about playing in bands, but if you had kids, I was going to ask you about it. Right. 